My question is on elections in Russia, uh, which will take place uh, on 15 and 17 March. Uh, and <clears throat> taking into consideration the reincidence of Stalinism, <clears throat> because uh, I hope that all of you have seen uh, that there were repressions and there were arrests. Uh, Monsieur Borrell mentioned also. So it was not, not only a political assassination of Navalny, but also the whole atmosphere in the society. So uh, do you consider not recognizing the upcoming elections? Because election <clears throat> elections are the process, not just the final <clears throat> act, the final day of ballot uh, in the box process. Well, we were discussing this, this issue already two weeks ago um, in the context of the famous or infamous uh, interview with uh, President Putin by an American uh, broadcaster. And I can only recall what I said back then. I mean, it's a very difficult, it's not very difficult to foresee how these elections will go on if you are considering, first of all, the track record, how Putin is organizing the elections for him to win. And second, the level of oppression, the general oppression going on in Russia, which was brutally and drastically underlined by the death of uh, Alexei Navalny on Friday. So to talk about uh, elections, uh, I think we will need to see what else happens because Russia and the current regime has a huge spectrum of, of tools to make it even more uh, joke than it is uh, already now. But uh, we don't flag ahead or we don't pre-announce ahead whether we are going to uh, recognize something or not. I mean, these are elections that were scheduled in Russia. So let's see if, uh, if there will be surprise and they, they, they will be free and democratic and transparent elections. Uh, and then we will pronounce ourselves on this. I can only recall that any attempt to organize uh, these uh, elections in the occupied territories, which don't belong to Russia, but are on the territory, sovereign territory of Ukraine, of course, that will not be recognized uh, for sure. I'm interested, um, because yesterday there was a big discussion, of course, because our, the widow of uh, Navalny was uh, here in Brussels. And my second question is, what can be done for all the other political prisoners in Russia? Because it's the greatest concern now what will happen to them, especially with Kara Murza, who has uh, very severe health problems, and his family <clears throat> is also concerned uh, about his future. In this context, I would like to... Um point uh, the finger or to attract your attention to the statement the EU27 issued uh, yesterday in the evening about the situation in Russia in the context of uh, Mr. Navalny's death where also other political prisoners are mentioned and the EU keeps calling for immediate and unconditional release of all those people who were um, detained and convicted and sentenced put into prison uh, based on politically motivated charges. There are political prisoners in Russia, no doubt they need to be released. Um, unfortunately, the European Union has no other means to interfere directly inside Russia to make these people free or to free these people. So we will continue using the tools we have that's calling out publicly through statements in international fora to point out the attention of our international partners to this ongoing violation of human and political rights of, of people in Russia.